Hello and welcome. What I'd like to do in this video is uh, to go through the steps to create a Windows PE disk, PE pre-execution environment. It, it would be the disk that we would use to uh, boot to a machine that's off so that we could do uh, something like an image X and make an image for it or boot to a machine that didn't have anything installed and deploy that image. In order to create this disk, the first thing that has to happen and has already happened on this machine is to install the Windows Automated Installation Kit, the WAIK, which has a number of tools uh, on it. So to start this thing, to create it, and you can create this on either for either an ISO, a CD, or you can create it for a USB. And this one I'm going to uh, go through and, and create the ISO uh, that we could then deploy to a uh, burn to a uh, CD and, and boot to the system. So to get there, we're going to go to the Windows, Microsoft Windows AIK, and then the deployment tool is going to right click and run this as the administrator because we're going to need administrative authority to do some of these things. And you can see the uh, path where our program files, Windows, AIK tools, PE tools. After we have done that, the first thing we need to do is to copy the structure that we're going to use for this thing. And, and to do that, we're going to use the copy, copy PE dot CMD. And then we're going to have to specify the architecture we're going to use. This is a virtual machine, has a 32-bit architecture, so I'm going to use the x80. 6 architecture for this thing. The next thing we need to do is give it a destination. Let's go C colon backslash and let's use images. Images. That's just, yeah, that's probably not a good thing. C colon backslash is as good as any though. Some place that we know where this will be. Hit the enter key and you can see that it, it has created a structure here, C colon backslash, and move me to C colon backslash images. Uh, I could do a directory here, and you can see that we do have some things. The etfsboot.com, an ISO folder, which is where we're going to uh, put most of the stuff that we want, stuff, good technical term, most of the files that we want so that, that we can then create the ISO image for this thing. So the next thing that I want to do is to copy the winpe.wim and make it the boot wim and we're going to put it uh, into, a, into the sources file under the ISO. We're going to create a structure similar to the media that comes with uh, Windows 7. So we're going to copy, if I can spell, copy C colon backslash images, that's that's the source, backslash win pe dot wim, the one that is here, and we're going to copy that and rename it c colon backslash images backslash is iso backslash sources, S-O-U-R-C-E-S, -E backslash, and we'll call it boot.wim, because that's the file name that we're going to be looking for, the system's going to be looking for. So we now have copied that one. You can, at this point, you can add whatever tools that you want. I'm just going to add image X because what I want to do as we go through this series is to create an image of this machine and then install that image on a uh, on a blank disk. So to do that, we're going to need to, to copy the file. So we're going to, the, the path that we're going to use, copy C colon backslash program files backslash Windows AIK, and I'm using the tab key as you probably uh, noticed. 
backslash, and that keeps me straight on the path too to be sure that I'm getting to where I think I'm getting. Backslash x86 backslash image x dot xe, and we're going to copy that to c colon backslash image is my path backslash ISO, and we're going to uh, leave it, and we're going to put it there. So we've copied that one file. After we've done that, we now should be ready to create our ISO image. To do that, we're going to use a Microsoft tool called OSCDIMG. Uh, if you want to look at the uh, the command and the switches, because it does have a number of switches, uh, TechNet has, in the TechNet library, has a, a good, an article that lists all the switches, all the different things that you can do with it. The two switches that we're going to use are the dash N and the dash uh, B. The dash B is the location where we're going to put this thing, and the dash N enables long file names. Not anything all that complicated on on those. So we're going to do OS C D I M G dash N dash B, and then you don't need a, a space between the B and the path that we're going to use. C colon backslash C colon backslash image is, I believe, is what I used. Uh, backslash E tfs boot dot boot dot com. You notice that that was there, and we're going to then go to c colon backslash uh, images backslash iso. Is the location, and then we're going to C colon backslash images. This is where we're going to name the ISO. Uh, so we'll just call it the Win 86 PE, or let's call it Win PE 86 dot ISO. When we do that, it's now going to go and create that image for us. And when we're done, we have the Win86, uh, Win PE86 ISO. That should now be bootable. The uh, ETFS boot.com command had to be put in there to make it bootable. Uh, that's the way you create the Win PE. Uh, that's the steps that are, are available to it. If you want the written steps that are available in multiple places on the internet uh, that, that you can get there. I want to do a couple of other, other videos. Um, this is a virtual machine. I want to get the ISO off of the virtual machine. Uh, attach it to my VM. Boot to it. Uh, generalize it. Actually use sysprep to generalize the system. Then boot to the uh, ISO that we just created and uh, make an image and then create a blank mach machine and go back and uh, deploy that image. With that, uh, I would like to uh, thank you for watching and I hope this has been useful.